Hi, um, today we're, we're going to discuss, we're going to talk about the teaching of reading. This is just uh, the introduction under our subject, uh, teaching and assessment of macro skills. When we say reading, it is a pro uh, process of constructing meaning through the dynamic interaction among the reader's existing knowledge, the information suggested by the written language, and the context of reading situation. So there is this interaction between the reader and the text and the author and the information that they are reading. So interaction between the reader, the information that they are, uh, that, uh, which are presented to them, even the author and um, the context of reading situation, even the environment. So that is the basic uh, meaning of reading. So what are the factors that influence reading in second or foreign language? Let's talk about the factors that influence reading. Number one, the cognitive development and learning style orientation at the time of beginning second or foreign language study. So what's the level of cognitive um, development of, of the students uh, during the time uh, that they started at uh, the time that uh, a student started or a learner started learning in the second or the foreign language. We know that language and cognitive development are two uh, interrelated or language uh, development also has something to do with the cognitive development, with the development of the mind of the, the learners. Number two. The first language proficiency, because uh, we should take note that um, the learning of the second language is also dependent upon the proficiency of the learners in their uh, first uh, language. So how proficient are they in their L1 when they are learning uh, L2? Because um, usually students do interpret uh, especially second language learners, even uh, uh, foreign language uh, learners, interpret what they are learning in the second language or in the target language using their L1. Number two, first language metalinguistic knowledge. When we say metalinguistic uh, knowledge, this has something to do with the explicit uh, knowledge, the mental representations which are created in the minds of the learners, like for example, what do they know about uh, syntax? What do they know about the, the phonological, the morphological, the pragmatics, and things like that? About uh, are they are they already good in uh, in terms of uh, syntax? Are they already good in terms of uh, coming up with sentences in in the first language? Number four. Second or foreign language proficiency, it's also a consideration. Are they already proficient in the foreign or uh, the second language? Because uh, there are some students who are already acquainted, who already have knowledge about the, the, the second or foreign uh, language. It's another consideration. Number five, first language and second language degree of differences. How different? Like, for example, in, in the Philippines, uh, uh, definitely uh, Filipino is somehow different with, with, uh, with, with, with English. Although there are a lot, there are also a lot of similarities in terms of uh, the alphabet, the sounds, and things like that. And number six, cultural orientations. Even the... Uh, the culture, how acquainted are the students in, uh, with, the tar, uh, with the target languages uh, culture. What are the concerns of teaching, of teaching reading? Let's talk about the concerns. Number one, schema activation. To make sense of new information in light of what they already know and to make the necessary connection between the two. So definitely... When you are teaching reading, there should be the, the schema activation. You should activate first the, the schema of the students, of the learners. 
So, how do you do that? How do you activate the schema? Number one, this, these are the pre-reading techniques which we can use, which you, we can use as teachers. Brainstorming ideas that a topic bring to mind. So, you have that particular topic, you have this particular uh, reading text that you are going to present to the students, but before doing so, you can first come up with a brainstorming activity. You can do brainstorming first about the topic, about the, the topic which is being presented in the text that you're going to use in your class. Number two, previewing a passage, noting headings and bold prints. You can task the students to look at the passage, to pre preview the passage, to, to have a glimpse of the passage, okay? To, uh, to take note of the headings, to look at the headings, to take, take a look at the, 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 the titles, the subtitles, okay? Constructing a graphic organizer. You can also ask the students, we can also ask the students to come up with a graphic or organizer which could help them outline the passage headings. And that would be uh, easy, uh, that would, mm, it would help them uh, to easily understand the selection and to come up with an outline as they read the text. Thing, guys, that we should consider when we teach reading is the vocabulary development. We know uh, that uh, it really has an impact on the reading proficiency of, of our students. Vocabulary development is an important factor in contributing to reading comprehension. So definitely, it would be quite difficult for students to understand, to comprehend a certain selection, a certain text, when there are so many words which they cannot understand. Studies conducted on the importance of vocabulary instruction demonstrate that it plays a major role in improving comprehension. So they come hand in hand. This instruction can be done through wide reading approach, direct instructions, or superficial instruction. How would you be able to? There are uh, uh, also other discussions on how you would be able to develop the student's uh, vocabulary because, as I mentioned, uh, the, the reading comprehension is sacrificed when students have limited vocabulary and th these are some of these suggestions on how you can improve your students vocabulary and that should also be checked that should, should also be analyzed and uh um and understood by the teachers when they teach reading okay so what are the principles of vocabulary instruction? Number one, be enthusiastic about content area language. So as teachers, you should also be enthusiastic about content area language. And number two, relate new vocabulary words to experiences and concepts that students know. As teachers, we should be able to, to relate the words which they, which they encounter in the text to real life um, situations to experiences of the students you should be able to to um to relate the the words that you that they encountered to their own experiences talk about the students experiences okay limit the the number of words taught in each unit limit the number of words taught in each unit concentrate on key concepts what really is your target what are your targets you cannot teach all the difficult uh, uh words in in a text you cannot uh uh discuss you cannot discuss all the meanings of the difficult words because somehow you also sacrifice comprehension help students to see clearly the associations among related concepts so they should be able to to relate also the the words which are being used with other ideas, with other concepts, and that would somehow make them easier to understand the concepts presented and even the meaning of the words used in the selections. Number five, use mental imagery and symbolic representation techniques to help students think about the words. Make them think, make them visualize, okay? Create mental images. Try to uh, make them imagine 
what really uh make them imagine the meaning of a, a word that they encounter that which are used in the selection number six model how to use graphic organizers graphic organizers are um re really useful in uh discussing in presenting or in improving students vocabulary number seven allow students enough practice in working with strategies and graphic organizers so that their uh, use become uh becomes a habit so when they are so inclined in making use of graphic organizers when they know how to make use of graphic organizers then every time um they would make use of it okay number eight use dictionaries and glossaries appropriately so in the philippines we we um nowadays it's easier it's easier to to identify the meaning of of words because we have online uh we can get it online the meanings or we can get some apps which students can make use of to identify the meaning repeatedly model how to determine a word's meaning in text material then another thing you can also uh teach the students how to determine the meaning of words by uh context by context clues there are so many ways on how they would be able to determine the meaning through context clues and other and other means in the in the sentences by even um not using uh apps or or uh dictionaries or whatsoever what is the basis for choosing words for vocabulary development now how do you choose the words which you're going to teach uh your students which you're going to highlight in your teaching high frequency words that's number one um is is it a high frequency word the word that you're going to to tell your students or, or to discuss in your class uh, academic words content area words so and that's another thing is that a very important word which is usually being used for academic purposes technical words that's another thing the technical terms they should be acquainted also with technical terms literary words and the low frequency words and that's it guys for our introduction in teaching reading so we're going to have more of more of it in the coming days thank you and bye-bye